The Intermax Lick Fusion 240mm all-in-one liquid cooler features a one-of-a-kind RGB sink water block with built-in flow indicator, static pressure optimized RGB fans, and a high-efficiency ceramic bearing pump for exceptional durability and noiseless operation. Click on the link below to learn more. All right, y'all, today we're doing a quick and dirty build. I'm actually gonna be assembling this small form factor system inside of the Silverstone SG05, and that's because we need one. We actually need a PC for tomorrow. We're gonna be shooting an episode of Bitwit or Nitwit tomorrow, and should the contestant on that little game show series that we do win, they'll need a gaming PC to take home. We're actually gonna be assembling a mid-range system inside of this case, so nothing too fancy, but definitely able to handle some 1080p gaming at uh, 60 FPS or higher, and it should be uh, a lot of fun. So I'm gonna walk you through again step by step what I'm doing here. It's not going to be a tutorial or a guide or anything but more or less just uh, a way for you guys to see how exactly I build one of these things. Now I'm actually going to call out all the parts that I'm using one by one as they get installed. So the first component will be B450i, Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. This is a mini ITX board fully packed with features and it is on the B450 chipset. You can see I've already kind of gotten into it. Looks like a raccoon was here. So the first thing I do, I start with CPU installation. This is an AM4 socketed motherboard. So you know that we are probably using a Ryzen processor. So we've got a Ryzen 5. 1600X. Yes, I know it's not second gen Ryzen, but it's still a really good quad core eight thread CPU and it's got the X, so it uh, runs at slightly higher clock speeds out of the box than its uh, 1600 brethren. But the 16, I'm so prepared for this video. Where the hell is it? Where? What? I just saw it. It was just here. Okay, I really don't know where it is. Here it is. I'm dumb. It was like literally right in front of me. <laughs> 1600X. I take it out of the clamshell very carefully making sure not to touch the pins. I've learned if you touch the IHS, the internal heat spreader, it's, it's not gonna kill a CPU or anything. If your hands are really oily, however, I would avoid touching it. You just don't wanna touch it in general. There's no reason to anyway. But if you just, you know, if there's a tap here and there, it's not the end of the world. But you definitely don't wanna touch the gold contacts. Do not touch those. Those, those are sensitive and that can mess something up if one of those goes bad. So to install an AM4 CPU, you lift the little lever up on the socket and you have to match up the gold arrow on the CPU with the tiny little arrow that's on the socket. Yeah, you really have to look for it. It's in, in one of the corners and it's usually gonna make the CPU turn sideways. So Ryzen is actually going perpendicular to the width of the board. And then you lower the arm just like that. And it's, it's, it's stuck in there and CPU installation is done. It's definitely one of the easiest parts to install in a PC. Next up, up, I tend to go for the memory. Sometimes that varies depending on the CPU cooler that I'm installing, but in this case, memory should do just fine. And for that, we have a 16 gigabyte kit, so two by eight gig sticks of Predator RGB. This is from HyperX, DDR4, and this is at 2933 speed. Might have to do some overclocking here if we really wanna make the most out of our Ryzen CPU, since it is memory speed dependent. It loves RAM frequency. Oh, I should be telling you how to do this. So uh, for the memory, you basically have these latches. Sometimes you have latches on both sides of the dim slot. And so you just wanna release them like so. This one only has them on one side. And then next you wanna match up the notch in the memory stick. See how there's a little notch there where there's no gold contacts. You wanna match that up with the notch that's in the dim slot. These are not perfectly centered, so they are keyed. They only go in a certain way. So that looks correct. Firmly push the stick down with even pressure till it clicks. And you should see any latches that were once unlocked fully back up into place after you hear that snap. And uh, you should also double check that one side of the stick or the other isn't sticking out. And we'll do the second one here. Oh yeah. Next I'm gonna go for the CPU cooler, which is the included Wraith Spire. I always get confused. Stealth is the littler one. This came included with our Ryzen 5 1600X. So it is an adequate cooler for the chip. You could even overclock a little bit with it. Let me get some thermal paste. Thermal paste is usually important for this kind of thing. So for a mainstream Ryzen CPU, I tend to go with the grain of rice method or a pea method, if you will. Just a pea size drop right in the middle, or sometimes I like to call it a turd. So for the Wraith coolers, you can see here on the fan shroud, we've got a little pop out AMD logo here. I usually like to mount that to the left though, or towards the rear IO of your motherboard away from your memory sticks, just in the event that, uh, you know, if you have to swap out your memory modules down the line for ones that have taller heat spreaders that you don't run into any clearance issues with this guy because that can potentially cause interference. So uh, to mount this guy, you basically just kind of slowly line it up, line up those screws with the holes. You don't ever want to press down on the CPU cooler when it's right over the CPU. And then I start screwing down. I usually go diagonal. So I'll do the top left, 
screw first and then I'll do the bottom right. And you don't screw those all, all the way down either. You just do a couple turns just to get them threaded. And then you start doing the other corners, just a few, just a, just a few turns per screw. And then you repeat that order until all the screws are fully seated. By applying this kind of even mounting pressure, you ensure that you don't accidentally crack the die or your IHS of the CPU in any way. So I'm getting a phone call. Hold on, my wife, hold on. Hello? I don't know, it's kind of fuzzy. Something about call 911, I, I don't know. Anyway, now you wanna make sure the fan on your CPU cooler actually spins up when you finally boot the system. So you gotta plug that fan in and you wanna find the four pin PWM fan header on your motherboard that's marked with CPU fan, usually CPU underscore fan or something like that. Uh, which looks to be this gray port right here. So we're just gonna pop that guy in. You can always uh, tuck your cable in as well. Just kind of get it out of the way. Looks a little nicer. And voila, CPU, CPU cooler, and memory have been installed. Now we can mount this sexy little package into the case. So let's bring over our SG05. Some of you old timers probably recognize this as my original HTPC case. This was, uh, this has served me very well. I'm actually kind of sad to see it go. It's a little sentimental, but I am happy that it's gonna find a new home uh, where it'll definitely be used a lot more than I use it now, which is never. And we do need to get back into our motherboard box one more time for the IO shield. IO shield that isn't here. I think I just realized why I never used this board in the first place. Well, that's, that's unfortunate. I have to use a different motherboard. All right, here we go. Sorry, Gigabyte, I, I tried. All right, looks like we're right where we left off. Oh wait, hold on, CPU fan. All right, now we're ready for the case. First, you put your motherboard and stuff aside and bust out your IO shield. It's basically a little protective plate that goes between your IO, your inputs and outputs on the back of your motherboard and your case while sealing the back of your case so that uh, the airflow is not compromised. So you wanna make sure that it's lined the right way and you gotta sort of be firm with this too. Just keep pushing it from the inside of the case. You might hear a snap or two. It should also be fairly obvious that if your IO shield has a painted side, that that painted side goes on the outside of the case and the sort of foamy, cushiony part goes on the inside. You should also turn around the chassis and take a look at the IO shield from this side just to make sure that it is, in fact, installed all the way. And it wasn't, see? That's why you do that. With that said, we can pop our motherboard in. The way I like to do this is by sort of dipping it in rear IO first. So dip it in this way, all right? And as we go in, you wanna make sure that the IO lines up with the IO shield on the back. That's the best way to do it. And I'm getting a phone call again. Damn it, honey! Hi, dear. She got locked out of the building. I will be right back. Okay, wifey sauce is in the building, everyone. And she's actually now manning one of the cameras. So I got uh, got a cameraman now. Wives are so useful. Now I have to go backwards just for a minute here because I forgot to mention this. Uh, I didn't have to do it in this case, but in some cases you will have to install some or all uh, of the motherboard standoffs. These were already pre-installed, so I didn't have to do anything, but these basically just elevate the motherboard ever so slightly off the floor of the chassis, and they also help the board align with your IO shield. So once that's all good, you get your motherboard screws, which should come included with your case, and you just screw in the motherboard. I like to leave the screws a little bit loose till the very end. That way, in case you need to shift the board around slightly to get one of the screws in, you can do that. It doesn't really matter what order you screw these in, and you don't wanna over-tighten them but you do want them to be snug. Now I usually like to connect my front panel connectors. They're these little uh, wires coming off of the front panel, of course. These lead to things like your front panel USB, your mic and headphone jack, your power button, reset button, uh, and so forth. So we wanna get these all wired up so that the front of our case is actually functional. I'm gonna start with USB 3.0. It's this large 20 pin connector here. So this is a keyed plug. So you wanna make sure that it's going the right way. You can see I've already sort of cable managed some of this from the previous build inside this case. Then we're gonna connect these pesky little guys. You'll have to find the pins for these on your motherboard and also consult your motherboard manual to find out exactly how they should plug in. It's pretty universal for all boards though, so I've actually kind of memorized the layout here. So I'm just gonna go for it. These are two pin connectors that have a positive and a ground. And you can usually tell which side's the positive because there'll be a little black arrow on that connector that indicates positive, the other side being ground, obviously. So all the front panel connectors are now wired up. We just have a single fan cable coming off of our 120 millimeter front facing fan. And our fan cable is actually zip tied to the front panel cables. So it's actually not able to reach the nearest fan header on the motherboard. So I need to snip off 
those tweezers. Very careful not to cut the wires. Your free fan cable gives me just enough slack to plug that guy in. Okay, moving on. Now another step that I could have easily done before mounting the motherboard inside the case, but still isn't a huge deal right now, is installing the M.2 SSD. We actually have a Samsung 970 Evo NVMe M.2 drive, 250 gig, that'll be our boot drive, and that'll mount straight to the motherboard. That's the nice thing about these M.2 drives, is that you don't need any cables, just uh, mounts into a M.2 slot, assuming that your motherboard has one, and the heat sink or cover to that M.2 slot is usually held in place by a screw or two. So here you can see our M.2 slot, and there's a little post with a little tiny screw on it. You wanna unscrew that screw, because that's gonna be the mounting screw for our M.2 drive. Keep that close, don't lose it, it's very tiny. And then you wanna take your M.2 drive, these M.2 drives are keyed, very much like our memory modules that we just installed. Uh, so there's a notch right there, and you have to match that up with the notch in your M.2 slot. Gently, but firmly. Make sure it's firmly in there. And then that is, that is what she said. Well done, wifey sauce. I'm proud of you. And then you push down the drive until it hits the post, and then you screw in that little screw. There it is. Now, before remounting your M.2 heatsink, you actually have to check if there's a thermal pad underneath, and if there is, there may very well be a piece of protective plastic. So you're gonna want to remove the plastic before you reinstall this thing, so. And she goes. Like I said, it's probably a little easier if you install that before you install your motherboard into the case, but you know. It's, it's really not that bad either way. Next up we have the power supply. This is a 450 watt Silverstone SFX unit, which means it is a smaller form factor than your typical ATX power supply. Perfect for a case like this because it only supports SFX units. You wanna find where your power supply mounts in your case. In this instance, we've got a cutout usually at the back of your case. And before you mount it, you wanna see which way the fan is facing. All power supplies, most power supplies will have a built-in fan. If your case has a dust filter for your power supply, then you wanna face your fan towards the dust filter. If it doesn't, maybe it's just some ventilation holes and the other side is pure steel, then you wanna give your fan the ventilation that it needs in order to cool components inside. This case has a lovely cover that has a ton of ventilation at the top, so I think it makes the most sense to have the fan pointed up. You could face it downward, but then I feel like it would be stealing a little bit of air from your CPU cooler, and you don't want these two fans to compete for airflow, so I'm gonna put it up, and once again, you should look to your case in most instances. For your power supply screws, there will most likely be four of them. And like most of the other screws that you'll be screwing in a build like this, they should be nice and firm. That's what she said again. That is what she said again. Wifey sauce two, Kyle zero. You may have also noticed that I already plugged in all my power supply cables that I knew I would need for the build into the unit itself before I started installing said unit. That definitely helps, especially in a smaller case. Keeps you from having to fish around inside the chassis to get all that plugged in. And just like that, the power supply was installed. So let me quickly go over the, the actual cables that we have here. We have our eight pin, eight pin EPS 12 volt connector for our power supply, 24 pin supplemental ATX motherboard power. This powers your motherboard. You can see that it's actually 20 plus four pin. All these are keyed. They all have have a latch on one side and there will be a little notch on each of the connectors that you're plugging these into. The latch should go on the same side as the notch. Very straightforward, but you wanna make sure that you're plugging these in the right way. We have a SATA power cable that actually has three SATA plugs coming off of it on a single cable. So you can actually power multiple drives or SATA devices uh, with a single cable. This is actually the only plug here that does not have uh, the sort of latch and notch mechanism. Instead, it has sort of an L shape. So since it's not symmetrical, that will determine which way it plugs in. And finally, we have our PCI Express cables which power our graphics card and we will be installing a discrete GPU in here in just a moment. We got two six plus two pin connectors here. So I'm gonna plug in the eight pin first. You'll hear a nice satisfying click. You probably can't hear it from here but um, that'll indicate that the latch of the plug has engaged with the notch on the connector. And then I'm gonna go for the 24 pin ATX. You'll see that there's sort of a little lip that the four pin has. That, that, that lip has to go underneath just like that to sort of lock in and, and engage with the rest of the connector before you start trying to plug it in. There it is. Now at this point, I also have to install a SATA cable. Now, I know I already mentioned that the power supply has plenty of SATA connectors coming off of it, but this is for power. We also need a SATA cable for data if we're gonna plug in a mechanical hard drive, which we are in just a moment. So the SATA cables that come included with your motherboard should look something like this. All right, uh, these are also keyed. They have a little L shape on the connector. So you wanna find that L shaped connector on your motherboard. For a mini ITX board like this, it shouldn't really matter which one you plug it into. You just wanna make sure that whatever port you're plugging into is natively controlled by your motherboard's chipset. It's usually more of an issue on larger form factor motherboards where you have so many SATA ports that they can't all be natively controlled by the chipset. So they wire some of them up to an add-on controller and that can lead to 
slightly reduced performance in some cases. So you wanna check your motherboard manual for that. So here it is again, we have SATA power coming straight from our power supply and SATA data coming from the motherboard. Now, obviously we have a very fast NVMe drive in here already, but that's just for our boot drive, relatively small for uh, actual storage purposes at 250 gigs. So I'll also be installing this very adorable WD Black one terabyte, two and a half inch drive. Now this mechanical drive will be going into this metal cage. It's a drive cage, which is part of the case. You can fit that two and a half inch drive right in here. And you'll also notice that I have a, a slim Blu-ray player already installed. It's, uh, it's it's not working though. There's actually no power going to it. There, there hasn't been in a long time because Windows 10 doesn't natively play back Blu-rays and I'm too cheap. I've always been too cheap to uh, fork out the, the money for an overpriced Blu-ray playing software. So whoever wins this thing can decide what to do with that optical drive. As for now, it just serves an aesthetic purpose because without it installed, uh, you just get this nasty open slot on the front panel there. So this drive will install this way. And for these two and a half inch drives there are two holes on either side there's really not much to installing these drives you just want to make sure that it's being installed the right way and that your SATA connectors are actually facing the way that you want them to be so that when you're ready to wire them up you have enough reach now that we have our mechanical drive and our optical drive installed in the cage we can install the cage into the motherboard so you just got to slot it in like so making sure that the front of that optical drive is flush with the front panel and then you just screw it down four screws now let's get that SATA drive wired up, shall we? Kind of hard to see for you guys. It's kind of hard for me to see too. Wired up. And last, but certainly not least, is the video card. So we have an EVGA GeForce GTX 1060 six gigabyte card right here. And you can see it's sort of one of the more compact designs. It's a little mini. Now your discrete graphics card is gonna go inside of your full size by 16 PCIe slot. And if you have a mini ITX board like we do here, you only have one of those. It's very simple. You usually have sort of a latch or a locking mechanism here that either needs to be pushed down or slid over in some capacity to release or unlock the slot, prepare it for mounting. That's what she said. Heather two, Kyle one. And then you also want to make sure that if you have expansion slots already installed in your case, which usually they are, you remove those with a Phillips head screw usually, or if they're thumb screws, you might be able to twist them if they're not too tight from the factory. So with those covers removed, you kind of install this in a similar fashion, again, like we did with the memory and the M.2 drive even, uh, where you have this connector of gold contacts and there is a notch that has to line up with the notch on your PCIe slot. That'll help you get things aligned. So once you get it hovered over that slot, you just push it down even pressure and the latch should now be back up. Your GPU is only half mounted though. You still have to bolt down the back end here. So get a couple of screws. So the SG05 actually has this little plate here that goes over your card like so. And you screw in from the outside like that. One on the back. The last thing we gotta do here is plug in our GPU, connect it to the power supply, that power cable. So the number and type of power plugs that your graphics card requires is going to vary based on the model. This one in particular only has a single six pin connector on it. You guys will forgive not being able to see anything because I just can't show you what I'm doing and do it practically at the same time. Aha, all right, there it is. That's in, Woo! very firm indeed. Damn it, wifey sauce three, Kyle one. That was a cheap one. That was really hard. That's what she said. You did that on purpose. So here it is, feast your eyes on that GPU. Fully installed power cable right there. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but there it is. For that matter, the entire build is now complete. Feast your eyes. I mean, the cable management could be a little tidier. I didn't spend any time at all really doing it. But uh, considering the size of this of this case, it's actually not terrible. Gotta love the form factor and size of this thing. It's just so incredibly compact. You can literally take it anywhere. So whoever wins this thing, hopefully they enjoy it and treat it with love and kindness. That's gonna do it guys. I told you it was quick and dirty. If you enjoyed the video, toss a like on it before you go and get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Also, if you wanna find parts to any of this stuff, I'll drop them in the description. Have a good one guys. I will see you all in the next video.